Welcome to Hi. the farmhouse table. Mm -hmm. You've been here a lot. I love this table. I love this table. I love you at this table. Me too. It's special. It's Me too. precious. Mm -hmm. um, this is my friend Whitney. Hi guys. And we're going to talk today together about Daily Pursuit mm -hmm. here in the challenge series. So why don't you introduce yourself because I know you and this table knows you, mm -hmm. but I maybe they don't, pray to maybe they don't know you as well. Oh, hi, I'm Whitney and I'm Kristen's friend mm -hmm. and she's in my prayer group and um, we've been daily pursuers together. She challenges me to do that. I am a, a, I'm married to a tall redheaded guy that mm -hmm. is our pastor. Yes. And um, I have two little blondes named Collins and Carter. And Chris and I are both are, I, actually I just left my girls and I always tell when I leave my girls, I say, mommy's gonna go tell people about Jesus because that's what we do for our jobs right now. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I get to do for my job is tell people about Jesus. So it's kind of fun. I do that through Imperfectly Brave and all sorts of avenues, writing, mm -hmm. speaking, talking, just talking about Jesus. Right. And going Same. out into your community. And doing it in my own neighborhood. In your own neighborhood. Yeah. I'm, so I think we really believe in where our two feet are. That's yeah. where we should be discipling. We're learning that. Yep. God's teaching us that. Mm -hmm. This year, really. Mm -hmm. Really this year. Yeah. He's teaching us yeah. that. So this week um, on the blog mm -hmm. and in the launch, we're really focusing on daily pursuit of being with God and starting that relationship. And... Um, I know that this has changed for you over the last few years. It looks different on you than it did five years ago. Um, and, and so I wanted to first have you tell a little bit about what that journey has been like. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when we talk about daily pursuit, you guys, we're talking about being in relationship with your creator and, and making that an important thing. Um, and, and we would talk about how applicable reasons to do that, applicable ways to do that. So tell them a little bit about yeah. what this process has been for you. Yeah. And we pray just before this. And I honestly wish that someone would have taken me by the shoulders years ago. I've been a believer since sixth grade mm -hmm. and just said, Oh, like the word can change you. And like, just like kind of shaken me a little bit and said the word, if you daily pursue God in his word, it will change you. Um, and not just even that, but if you, if you, if that becomes your priority above everything else, because I did, I was in his word. Mm -hmm. I was in all the Bible studies. I've been in Bible studies since sixth grade too, but that it would become my priority. And, um, I, for a long time, um, so I would get up in the morning and I knew I would want to spend time with God. Like I knew that cause I loved him mm -hmm. and I knew what he did for me. Um, but I would do everything else, right? Like I'm not the only one that's ever done this in their life. Okay. I would do everything else. And this is pre kids. Mm -hmm. So like, right. <laughs> not all the people in your face in the morning, like mm -hmm. give me all my needs. I think I remember that. Right. Whatever that was like, uh -huh. but I was still choosing me over him. And so I would do all the things in the morning. And then I remember I would literally like sit in my closet and I would open up the word and I'd be like, okay, brr, like, mm, yeah, that was good. And then I would pray and then maybe I would journal about it, but like, it'd be all like rush. It was like, it's like, it would be like eating ice cream with like, it'd be like eating the hot fudge and not having ice cream or like, mm -hmm. it was all so backwards. Yeah. It was yeah. all so backwards. And then I would like be sent off into the world, into my workplace. Like, oh, I did it. I spent time mm -hmm. with God and it wasn't transforming me. It wasn't transforming me and it wasn't intimate with him. Right, it was checking a box. It was checking a box and it was never like, sit, sitting in his presence never, like now it can just, I can just sit in his presence and it'd be mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. um, whereas that was like, do the thing, do the thing. And now it's like, I wanna linger with him. I want it to be longer. I want it to be sweeter. But I had to make, I had to make drastic changes in my life to make it first. And so, just a little bit about my story. I um, had, I mean, I've just had food issues and exercise related issues and stuff in my life. And so, um, I would get, roll out of bed and put on my tennis shoes, which there is nothing wrong with that. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. It just depends on your personality. Sure. 
And um, it had become an idol to me though. And so that was what I would go pursue first <clears throat> because that was my idol. And then I would throw God on top of that thinking, well, he's, he's surely gonna be, be able to fix that. It wasn't until I had to crush that idol and that was really like, you've probably crushed an idol, you've probably, crushed, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. And it's, it still can resurrect. And um, I crushed it though. And I said, I'm not gonna let that be first in my life anymore. And I said, I'm gonna change and I'm gonna make time in God's word first. Like literally first, like for my personality, it actually had to be first because I'm just like an all or nothing person. Like, right. I just needed that hard line. And so, and plus it was crushing that idol where running was. It needed to crush that time period even. Mm -hmm. Like I had to right. take that over. And so, so I did that and it's, nothing has been more freeing for me. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Nothing. It's good. At all. Yeah. But I, but it had to become first. And so I think that's the hard question is, is spending time with him first in your life. So... What blows me away is that we are a generation that has access to the Word of God. We have the most access to the Word of God of ever because we can put the Bible on our phones, on an iPad. We are completely free. We live in a free country. Yeah. And yet it is really said that we are a generation of Christians walking around in America today that knows the least amount of Scripture that read scripture the least. And, and even Beth Moore talked on this at Passion and she just really called us out like on the carpet. And I say that like, this is us, like this oh, is us, yeah. our generation, the people that are in yes. America right now, we fit under this banner too. And like, here it is, it's just right here. So why do you think that we aren't getting in the word? What is, what is the hang up? I mean, it's right here. So the problem is that, is that we're not choosing it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's our problem. I think, and I'm pretty sure what Beth Moore talked about our generation was that she fears that we will be a distracted generation, mm -hmm. that that's what we'll be known for. And that is scary. And I have been distracted before. I can be very distracted. I think a couple things are rattling around in my brain as to why we don't. Um, one, because we don't like every single word in there is his promise to me mm -hmm. because of how much he loves me and he wants me to be with him. Like it's all you talk about all the time, Kristen, like it's his rescue mission for him. F for me is this word for me. And so it's that whole, like if we could grasp how much he loves us, we would run to this book for everything. Like this is what we would need. Mm -hmm. But I think so often it it's just become words, especially for those of us that have been believers for a long time. I've been discipling a girl who is in the word for the first time and it is so fun. And I leave praying, Lord, I want to read your word like that because she's like in awe all over, like earth for the first time of Jesus miracles. like. We need that, like that awe and remembering that these promises are for us. So there's that. But then I also think, and this was a reminder this morning. So it's like this tension, right? It's like this rubber band, like a pendulum, however you want to look at it. There's this great love of God mm -hmm. that we need. And then there's this fear of God of like, this is all true. So we should probably know it. Right. And we're held accountable. And to we're that. held accountable to this. Mm -hmm. And like, they're fear God, like, and it's the beginning of all wisdom. And so like, yeah, you're not going to want to feel like getting into it every day. Every morning, I don't feel like it, mm -hmm. but, but there is like, he is God. And so sometimes we just have to get back to that. It doesn't need to be a complicated theological discourse. He's God. And so therefore obediently I should be in his word. Right if that makes sense. And then the other is, my friend um, tells me this all the time, and I think it's kind of goes back to the first thing, but like, we need our left brains co to connect with our right brains when we read the word, which means every word was written for us. So like, I can take these promises and like, they can get filed in my left brain, but my right brain needs to connect those to my life mm -hmm. and realize that they're for me and for you and for you or else we're just reading gibberish right words on a page yeah 
It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's not a life source to us. Yeah, yeah, a life source. So, talk about you. Wait, oh, I would, okay, this has been rattling in my brain since you asked me mm -hmm. to do this. This faithfulness does not happen overnight either to right. this. Like, if we want to be faithful to God, we are not going to wake up in the morning and be faithful to God. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. Right. Like it, it, it comes with us. It comes with a plan. Right. Yeah. Because it's also our love story yeah. with him. And often, most times when we fall in love, mm -hmm. it's, it gets deeper and deeper yes. and you work yes. at it and you work at it and, yes. and through trials and through happiness that changes your relationship and you have a different bond mm -hmm. than you did that first time yeah. that you saw each other yeah you know and that first date that first mm -hmm. experience was different feelings yeah it was maybe yeah. more surface feelings just like you know those first feelings that you had with God they mm -hmm. were different than the ones that you have after you're walking that road together mm -hmm. and so yeah. You know, it's very much a part of the process is And I think too, like, because I'm in a season of great refinement right now in his, of his word. And I think as we get older, we get more calloused, harder things happen to us. Mm -hmm. Our life doesn't look like the life that we dreamed about in college or in high school. It doesn't look that way. And so all of a sudden we're having to say, God, are you real? Because I thought my life was going to look like this. Mm -hmm. And my life looks like this. And so how does, so what is, what, what are you doing, God? And so all of a sudden, you're having to wrestle with maybe some false perceptions you had of God. And like what he really wants for you. And how it's actually better, mm -hmm. like the refinement is actually better. That my life doesn't look like how I dreamed about then is actually better. But I think we get stuck in that. So some of us get stuck in, well, God, you didn't show up for me this way. And so I'm mad at you. So I just am not going to go there. Mm -hmm. We just get stuck. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So in the places when you've been stuck and, yeah. and when you kind of, when God kind of a few years ago really brought you into this sweet space with him in the word and, and you were going through a process of setting time and that kind of stuff. Before we talk about that, I want you to read the verse yeah. um, that you feel like has helped you focus more on being in the word yeah. and when and when and why. And so we talked about kind of how I struggled with idols mm -hmm. and that's not a like that's not a fun thing to talk about no um and i still struggle with idols um because i'm human uh and it's not that god's mad at me for doing that but he just has something so much better mm -hmm. for me than that and so um he get, he kept though like i would wake up in the morning and like I said, my idol was running or like just basically focusing on myself and my body and how I wanted to feel. And so I'd lace up my tennis shoes and he would like, it was in my brain. It was this, and it was, um, Matthew six thirty three. but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be provided for you. And that's is actually in a whole passage of like cure for anxiety, like how not to be stressed out in your life, which mm -hmm. basically America is stressed out. Everybody is stressed out a little bit. All, all of us, uh, we're all just have a lot of things happening. Mm -hmm. So for me, like that act, that literally had to mean for me, I'm, this is not a banner over everybody for me. Seek first had to be, because again, I'm like an all or nothing. I had, to, it had to be first. Mm -hmm. I had to do it first thing in the morning. Now I know so many people that that's not a reality for them. And so, you know, but still it goes back to priority. Mm -hmm. So how are you making it a priority? How are you checking your idols and then making that a priority? And again, that crushing those idols are hard. Like they're really hard. Yeah. They're hard. But seek first. So for me that had to be that for me that had to be actually like the first thing in the morning, but it also it just really means like what's your priority? Yeah. What's the first thing? What's your first thing in your okay. life? It's good. So we want to give you some tangible takeaways, yep. some tangible steps, because this is challenge. This, a challenge is very rarely something that just happens easily. Um, and, but I think it's, I think we both know, and many of you know, it's worth it. 
we know and can tell when we're consistently in the word and how that plays out in the rest of our day and when we are seeking him first how that plays out in the way that we interact with other people our families our friends how we interact with the people that we do life with and how that plays out in the community as well so we want to give you some steps and we want to make this something that can play out for you so why don't you talk a little bit about your process and let's give them some tangibles and we were made you were made to do hard things, okay? I don't know what season of your life you're at or what, like, mm-hmm. you are not a weak, wounded woman, okay? You are saved by the creator of the universe and his spirit is inside of you and it is an all-consuming fire. So, we should, like, run head first into a challenge. Like, we should just, but I think so many of us, we believe this lie. The enemy is just, like, speaking it that we no, you're weak and mm-hmm. you can't and you have so much going on and yeah. how are you really going to fit that in? Just one more thing. You, we, God is dwelling inside of us. Got it. Okay. Like we've got it. Mm-hmm. So we're going to challenge ourselves to this. So my process, um, just a couple of thoughts for you, but you can even like write these down if you're thinking about it. So I set a place. I set a place and I set a time. Okay. For me, that's first thing in the morning. I just get up a little bit before my kids because I know it's going to be quiet. That's me. Um, but, but what you need to think about is place and time. Okay. So when can you have quiet? Like I'm talking quiet. Here's a challenge. Like I'm not saying like the TV is on in the background and your kids are, when can you, or where can you find quiet to be, to meet with the Lord? Okay. And make that a priority. And you know, talk to your kids about it. Like mommy's going to her closet for 15, 20 minutes. To meet with Jesus that's beautiful you're discipling your kids mm-hmm. like that's a beautiful thing if they know that mommy's doing that that's a really beautiful thing so and guess what your kids can like they well maybe not little tiny babies but we all have seasons sure it's gonna be fine, fine. okay but set a place set a time right um, then the other thing that you're gonna have to do with this and and just kind of what we were saying with kids you're gonna need to coordinate with either your spouse or your kids right like this is a communication piece like you're going to have to say, this is important to me and I'm going to do this. Some, I understand that some spouses will not um, care and won't allow for it. And so if then like find a different space and time, mm-hmm. like you can do that. Yeah. Um, but I coordinate with Michael. So just like in my little world, I get up first and I spend time with the Lord. Michael is on kid duty for that time when I'm with the Lord. Um, and then... Michael has his time with the Lord and I'm on kid duty when he's with the Lord. And so it takes, Mm -hmm. it takes coordination, but we've communicated about it and we've talked about it and we know it's important to us. So that's what we've done. Yep. Um, okay. This is one though that I think sounds really frivolous, but I think it's really important. Make it sweet for yourself. So when you spend time with the Lord, you don't need to be sitting on a hard bench at a table with a Bible, like, bah, what do I do? Like, no, I mean, I get up and I kind of like shuffle around my house and I typically get coffee. I might step outside and like breathe in the fresh air. I might listen to a worship song for like, then there's so much beauty and freedom in that time with him too. Mm-hmm. So like, what speaks to you? You're a unique creation in the Lord. So make sure he's touching you in those places. So like, Right now it's been pretty in the morning. So I step mm-hmm. outside and I breathe in the air and I thank him for the birds and make it sweet for yourself. And then I cuddle up on a couch. My place is I cuddle up on a couch. I bring up my little blankie and I read. And a little tiny just like pointer in this. Um, make sure like even the night before just check that your Bible is there and like maybe your journal or whatever you do is sitting by the couch or wherever you go in the morning so you're not spending your time trying to gather your things Mm -hmm. so that and then okay this is just a little tiny thing I always open with a psalm Mm -hmm. I always read a psalm and a lot of times I end up reading it out loud to myself or like as a prayer to God Um, it's sweet because it's David is so emotional Mm -hmm. he wrote most of the psalms that I can react to that and I can kind of like start feeling right if that makes sense um, and then the last is have a reading plan. Like, don't just go in blindly, you know, 
have a reading plan. Um, so like Kristen just gave you a reading plan. So use that this week just to get into the word. Um, maybe you get one verse, like maybe all you can do is one verse and that's okay. Like that's okay. Maybe you want to keep reading. That's good too. Um, and then just let him speak to you. And I, I'm not a fan, like, I'm not a fan of being like, and then journal mm -hmm. and then respond. Like if you're a writer and you like to journal, that's awesome. Then you should do that. But if you listen to God through music, then maybe read the word and let, and respond in music. Mm -hmm. Um, or take a walk. I mean, if you have the luxury of taking a walk, take, you know, read the word and then kind of go talk about it with him on a little walk, whatever works for you. Right. That is not what we need to be like, what, what is going to change you is this not necessarily the tool that you use afterwards. Right. If that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. And in having those free places, it's more relational than yes. going through the motions yeah. of this Bible time. I think I was told that like I had to write down things. And I'm a right. I like that, but there are seasons when I don't want to do that because that's like my job, and mm -hmm. so I just want to respond through something else. Yeah. So, yeah, those are my pointers. Those are five. So, set a place, coordinate, um, make it sweet for yourself, open with a psalm, and then have a reading plan. So, that's it. That's what I got. And it and it might sound easy when we're talking about it. It's not going to be easy. No. You're going to have to fight for it. But it will be worth it. And you've seen that play out in your life. I'm how totally have, different. To give, them some, give them some things. Like give, how are some examples of how you're totally different? I didn't know that being in his presence meant joy. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. um, he was God to me, but he wasn't personal for me. Um... But spending time with him has made him my personal um, love, everything. I mean, it's made it so much sweeter and so much more personal. Um, and the thing is, is like right now, right now actually I'm in a season of having to fight to be in the Word. It's not coming easy to me. I, I'm having to lean in mm -hmm. rather than like just want to wake up in the morning and linger in his presence. But the beautiful thing in that is I have a foundation of having been intimate with him mm -hmm. that I remember and I know how sweet it is. And so I'm going to keep fighting for that because I know how good it is. And so whatever season you're in right now, whether it's everything is sweet and good or everything is super challenging, keep like do it because you're either going to need it mm -hmm. in a little while. Um, you're going to need the reminder of just how good he is. Or if you're in the sweet spot right now and you're like, nah, I don't know if I really, you're going to like, you're going to need that. Yeah. You're really going to need that. And when you're pressing in and you're like, Lord, I need to believe that all this is true. He will meet us. He's meeting me right now. Mm -hmm. And even though it feels hard, he's meeting me because yeah. he, he's faithful. Yep. He's faithful. Mm -hmm. You guys. Daily pursuit, mm -hmm. okay? That's going to change you, mm -hmm. and it's going to deepen your love relationship with your Heavenly Father, who is absolutely abundantly crazy, crazy, crazy in love for you. you. Take his breath away. Mm -hmm. So try it out. Try it out. Don't take our word for it. Nope. Go try it out. Get in the word. Mm -hmm. You've got your reading plan. Go do it, and we'd love to hear about it. You can follow Whitney. And hear more of her words at WhitneyPutnam.com and also at ImperfectlyBrave.com and learn more about her and look at um, her writing and she would love for you to join her there. Yeah. So this has been fun. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thanks, Brad.